Hey, what's up, students? My name is Joanna, one of your next gen interns. And before you do anything, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Also, you can find us all over social media. You can find us on Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, and Facebook. Now, here's a funny video I found. I'm in so funny if you guys thought the same thing make sure to let us know in the comments below also if you haven't been keeping up with worship we have a worship playlist for you guys you can find it in the description below or in the card above hey guys don't forget that we have in-person student services and you can find us in the gym during any weekend service and now to this week's sermon hello i'm pastor tito i'm one of your next gen pastors here at westover and we're continuing a new sermon series called reset now, we know life has been crazy since we were all introduced to COVID and his 19 strands of awfulness. Life has been really, really difficult for many of you. And we also know that there's probably no amount of bribery that we could pay you to go back in time and go back in a quarantine with your family. And while life has been really hard for many of us, we want to give you an opportunity to hit the reset button. We want to do something about it. We believe that we can help give you a chance to start fresh. And here's the way we want to do just that. Last week, we talked about four areas that I'm convinced if you'll add these to your life will make all the difference. We talked about practical teaching. We talked about private disciplines. We talked about personal ministry and providential relationships. And now just a quick recap. Number one, practical teaching. That's believing what is true. And that's listening regularly to what is true so that when what is fake walks by, you're able to sniff it out. Random thought of the day. Did you know that at banks and grocery stores, the way they train cashiers to know when fake money is around, when there's a counterfeit, it's not by getting them super familiar with all the counterfeits, it's actually by making sure they're so familiar with the real thing that when they touch, smell, and handle fake money, something just seems off. And that's what good practical teaching does for us. If someone tells you something that isn't true about yourself or about your God or about your friends or your family, you don't get bothered, you don't get shaken, you don't get upset, you just move on because you know it isn't true. That's what practical teaching does. Then there's the area of private disciplines. And I love the way Pastor Christian said this. He said it all boils down to scripture and prayer. And when you pray, you don't have to be like overly religious or super rigid and say the right things and not say the wrong things. You just need to be real. You just be, need to be honest. And when you are, you can be assured that God's listening. In fact, there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about this in James 4 8. Now, let me tell you who James was. James is the half brother of Jesus. That means him and Jesus both shared the same mom, Mary. You know, the there's not enough room in the inn, Mary. Joseph, this really is your baby, Mary. But here's what was different about them. They had different dads. Jesus' dad was, well, God. And James' dad is Joseph. Now, can you imagine Thanksgiving and family reunions at that house? I just picture James coming home and being like, Mom and Dad, you'd be so proud of me. I had just this great year, like sales were up, things were awesome. And then Jesus walks in and he's like, yeah, I gave sight to a blind man today. <laughs> I mean, poor James. But here's why this is important. Because some people believe James didn't even believe that his brother was really God in the flesh. Like, he heard about the miracles, he probably saw Jesus do some of the miracles, but he still thought that Jesus, his brother, was a fake until he saw his brother crucified to death on a cross. Until afterwards, several days later, he saw his brother was alive again after he saw with his own eyes that he was dead. And here's where James says, come near to God and God will come near to you. That's why I'm convinced prayer isn't nearly as hard as many of us make it out to be. In fact, God wants to be close to you and God wants to hear from you. And the more we spend time reading his word, the more we give God the space and the opportunity to talk to us. Then there's the area of personal ministry. If you'll decide to be brave and make this a part of your life, I promise you, it'll add value, significance, and purpose to your life. Because you'll realize that you were created to do more than just homework. Now do your homework, I mean, that's important, but your life is about more than just doing what's best for you. It's about spending your life for others. There's a saying, 
It's not hard to remember, but it's one of those sayings that the more you think about it, the more important you realize it becomes. Here it is. Everyone spends forever somewhere. Think about it. If the Bible is true, if God is real, if Jesus was telling us the truth and he wasn't some crazy person or just some liar McLiarson, then there really is forever in front of us. Sorry, 2011 version of Drake. YOLO isn't really a thing. Now, YOLT, you only live twice? Well, okay, never mind. But here's the thing. As followers of Jesus, we really believe that this life is not all there is. That once you breathe your last breath on this earth, you breathe your first breath in eternity. And there are only two destinations. There's heaven and there's hell. And as crazy, as cryptic, as old school as it might sound, we believe it because Jesus talked about it a lot. In fact, half of the stories that Jesus told, we call them parables, they were stories that he would make up to teach a lesson. Half of them have something to do with eternity and the afterlife. They have something to do with heaven and hell. So we think personal ministry is our opportunity to do what Jesus asked of us. Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew 28, 19 through 20. These were some of Jesus' last words to his followers. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. There it is. Our life's biggest mission, our highest calling, our most important job, to be disciples who make disciples. Then we talked about this fourth area last week. This is an area that if you'll add it to your life, I promise you, your life will dramatically improve. It's providential relationships. Providential relationships, these are the people that are your people. These are the people you do life with, the people you go deep with. And our goal is to be that people. That if you don't have friends like that already, we wanna do that. We wanna help you find deep friendships with people who really care about you. Now, disclaimer, these are normal people. Church people are far from perfect. And I know there's probably someone watching right now that you laughed out loud and you're like, amen, brother, I know that's true. But it, it's crazy, because we will let you down from time to time. We will tick you off from time to time. But our hope is that when you get to know us, you'll see a realness. You'll see somebody who's trying to become more and more like Jesus every day, even when we don't feel like it. And when we fail and when we miss the mark, you'll at least hear an apology from us. Now, why is this such a big deal? I love the way Pastor Christian said this last week. He said, your friends have the ability to determine the quality and the direction of your life. And it's so true. If you wanna laugh and have a life that's full of fun, then you need to hang out with people who are funny and know how to have fun. If you don't want a fun life, if you want a boring life with no risks and no adventure, then don't have any friends. Then don't invest in people. Don't go deeper, stay surface level. Keep to yourself. But let's take this a step further. You've probably heard someone say, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. And for as annoying as it is when your mom says it, it's absolutely true. If you'll hang out with people who are going somewhere, they might just take you along for the ride. But if you're gonna hang out with people who are not going anywhere, well, that's it. And I can't stress what a big deal this is. Your five closest friends right now are probably the number one biggest predictor of your future success. I mean, think about the day Paul McCartney met John Lennon, or the day Batman met Robin, or when Buzz and Woody met, or when SpongeBob and Patrick met. But all four of these things help prepare you for this one final area. Now, I know I said if you'll add all four of these things to your life, it'll make your life better, and that's true, but let me explain why. It's because when you add these four things to your life and you do them consistently, you prepare yourself for when the bottom falls out. If you'll do these four things and they're part of who you are, then when your world starts crumbling around you, you're ready. And here's the thing, if and when you experience a pivotal circumstance, Somebody that you care about, that you thought you would be with forever breaks up with you. Someone you love gets cancer. Someone you care about passes away. It doesn't make sense. And you can't help but wonder and ask God, where were you when this happened? Or why didn't you do something to stop it? Or maybe you just transition out of your faith-filled environment to a faith-less environment. You used to go to church every week. 
you used to go to Bible study or small group every week, but now you go off to college and no one's going to church. Or you start having football practice on church nights and football games on church weekends, and you just can't seem to make it to church anymore. Or COVID-19 hits, and you're just not around all the practical teaching and all the providential relationships you used to be surrounded with. So as a result, you begin to question if what you had in the first place was ever real to begin with. But let me encourage you, if that's you, you're not a bad person. You're not a terrible person. Things aren't hopeless. You're a real person. And you're now beginning to ask some really good questions. And truth be told, everybody should be asking questions like this at some point. But here's where most people give up. Most people don't survive the search for answers. They gave up because they had questions. Maybe they were afraid that God wasn't who they thought he was. Or maybe they were scared that God didn't really exist in the first place. And as a result, so many wonderful people have been stuck with a childhood faith that doesn't work in their real life circumstances. But let me assure you friends, he is real. He's big enough to handle your biggest questions and he's not mad at you for having those questions. And if you've been one of those people that you felt like you've outgrown your faith, and maybe you should know that it's time to start asking the right questions so you can consider stepping out of your childhood faith and stepping into a more mature faith. One that has evidence to back it up. One where you don't have to throw your brain out the window to be a believer. One where even heaven and earth could pass away and you know you could still trust it. Where you could go to the grave believing the facts and not just in fairy tales. Man, I would love to pray for you. If you'd bow your heads and close your eyes. Father, we love you. God, we thank you that you're not frightened by our questions. You're not nervous when we're uncertain about what we believe and why we believe or where we're going with these things. But in fact, you give us grace that you walk through these things with us. Father, I pray that everybody listening, God, everybody tuning in to this message would choose to daily, weekly, regularly have practical teaching that reminds them who they are, what is true about themselves and what is false, and what is true about you and what's false. God, that they would make it a point to develop habits of private disciplines where they would read scripture and where they would spend time in prayer. God, they would practice personal ministry and bring other people to you, that they would tell others about the best news in the world because God, everyone spends forever somewhere. And Father, that our students would choose to lean on, on those relationships, those providential relationships, to have people that they actually go deep with, that know them fully and that they know fully. Father, because when the pivotal circumstances come, when the faith crashing event happens, when they move out of a religious environment to an irreligious environment, God, I pray that their foundation would be sure and that they would not be shaken because they haven't just believed in a childish childhood faith, but they've developed into a mature faith. God, I pray you would answer those questions in the name of Jesus. Friends, we love you. We're so thrilled that you're tuning in to this message, and we can't wait to see you next week. That was such a great sermon. We really miss you guys. Make sure you check out our worship playlist down below in the description or in the card above. Also, we can't wait to see you in the gym every week in service. We miss you guys. Bye.